There's a saying that there are no atheists in a foxhole, especially while under artillery fire. Lying as close to the ground as possible, with shells falling all around you, you just wait for the one to finally fall into your trench. Artillery is responsible for the majority of casualties in wars, and even Stalin referred to artillery as the god of war due to its destructive capabilities. Their tactics, firepower, various types of ammunition, and targeting methods will rank them as the deadliest weapons. However, the phenomenon and development of artillery and its modes of operation throughout history, as well as many of its darker aspects, are little known. In this video, we will take you through the lesser known history of artillery and how its emergence completely changed the way of warfare. We will show you little known information and bring you closer to the life of the crew of these powerful weapons, as well as those on the receiving end, and how one weapon completely changed the world. Let's begin. Everything started with the human need to affect the enemy from a distance. Thus, the first projectiles were used, such as a stone from a sling or a bow and arrow. However, as defense within fortress walls was extremely effective, there arose a need for launching projectiles with significantly greater destructive power. Thus emerged the first precursors to cannons, such as catapults and ballistae, which used mechanical energy to launch projectiles over great distances and with great force. However, the real revolution occurred with the discovery of gunpowder in China, leading to the creation of the first cannons in the Middle Ages. These early cannons were primitive, often unreliable, and did not possess much destructive power. However, a major change occurred around 1420, when artillery became much more powerful and could now efficiently batter strongholds and fortresses. The cannons during this period were elongated and the recipe for gunpowder was improved making it three times as powerful as before. This ended the defenders' advantage of the fortresses of the past and completely changed their construction. Unlike the high, vertical walls that were susceptible to direct hits, the new fortresses, called star forts, had lower, sloped walls. These sloped walls, often built of earth and stone, better absorbed and dispersed the energy of artillery strikes. Cannons quickly became key in siege warfare especially after the Ottoman forces demonstrated their power during the conquest of Constantinople in 1453. Then, 69 cannons bombarded Constantinople continuously for 40 days, firing over 19,000 projectiles. One of the cannons weighed 19 tons, requiring 200 people and 60 oxen to place it in position, and its rate of fire was seven shots per day. Through various wars that followed, cannons developed and became increasingly sophisticated, providing support to the infantry and changing the course of battles. The greatest development, and soon after, the greatest use so far, was seen in the 19th century. Then, developments in metallurgy enabled the construction of breech-loading rifled guns that could fire at a much greater muzzle velocity. The first mass use of cannons that would shape all future wars occurred in World War I. By 1914, during the German advance into Belgium, the power of German heavy artillery became evident as it effortlessly destroyed the Belgian fortresses around the city of Liège. Twelve concrete fortifications were completely annihilated without having the chance to return fire. The Germans utilized massive 305mm howitzers and even larger 420mm super-heavy howitzers, which had to be transported by railway. The trenches posed new challenges, primarily logistical and tactical, with artillery playing a crucial role. The strategy of exhausting the enemy became imperative for the warring parties, and a continuous artillery barrage was seen as the ideal method. Artillery did not significantly contribute to the conclusion of World War I, but led to the enormous number of casualties for which trench warfare is known. During World War I, the rapid evolution of artillery ammunition mirrored the shifting dynamics and tactics of the battlefield. Initially, shrapnel shells were the artillery's choice against infantry and cavalry, dispersing metal balls over a wide area upon detonation in the air through a timed fuse. These were deadly to troops in the open but lost effectiveness with the shift to trench warfare. As battles entrenched, high explosive shells took precedence, designed to demolish fortifications, wire obstacles, and trenches themselves. The wounds inflicted by artillery in World War I varied greatly and were often devastating leaving many soldiers with injuries that changed their lives forever. The type of shell largely determined the medical conditions they faced. Shrapnel shells, designed to burst in the air and scatter small, lethal balls over a broad area, led to numerous puncture wounds, 
soldiers struck by shrapnel could endure multiple penetrating injuries, resulting in severe bleeding, infections, and damage to muscles, bones, and internal organs. These scattered wounds were particularly challenging to treat, frequently necessitating amputations or leading to long-term disabilities. High explosive, HE, shells were even more destructive. They produced a powerful blast wave upon detonation, capable of hurling soldiers into the air or against solid surfaces, causing blunt force trauma. Injuries included broken bones, internal bleeding, and traumatic brain injuries. The blast wave could also rupture eardrums and lungs, inflicting immediate and, at times, fatal damage. Furthermore, high explosive shell explosions often created flying debris and shrapnel, leading to additional penetrating injuries. Collapsed trenches or dugouts could also bury soldiers alive. Gas shells added chemical burns and respiratory injuries to the artillery's toll. For instance, mustard gas exposure could cause severe blistering of the skin and mucous membranes, blindness, and lung damage. Chlorine and phosgene gases resulted in choking, coughing up blood, and asphyxiation. The insidious nature of these chemical injuries meant symptoms might take hours to appear, by which time the damage was often severe and irreversible. The constant threat of artillery fire had a profound psychological impact as well. Many soldiers developed shell shock, characterized by anxiety, nightmares, tremors, and an inability to function. Treating artillery wounds presented enormous medical challenges. Infections were widespread and facilities often lacked the means to address the severity and scale of the injuries adequately. Pain management was basic, and the understanding of psychological trauma was still developing leaving many soldiers to endure without sufficient support. However, artillery posed a danger to everyone on the battlefield, including its own crews and friendly forces. At the start of the war, artillery units relied on visual methods and estimates to determine the distance to the target, primarily using the experience and intuition of the gunners. Methods such as observing the smoke from a fire projectile or listening to the sound of the shot were common, but also allowed a large margin for error. As the war progressed, more sophisticated methods were introduced, including topographical maps, trigonometric calculations, and the use of airplanes for reconnaissance and fire correction. Despite advancements, the fire control system remained unreliable and imprecise. It was common for artillery fire to mistakenly hit friendly troops instead of enemy positions due to errors in coordinates, poor distance estimation, or simply because of changing weather conditions that affected the projectile's trajectory. Such tragedies were a frequent cause of loss of life among Allied forces. In the conditions of war, production was accelerated to the maximum, which often led to a decrease in quality and safety. Irregularities with ammunition, such as poorly filled shells or defective detonators, could cause premature detonation in the cannon barrel. Moreover, the intense use of artillery pieces over time resulted in their wear and tear, increasing the risk of explosions that could seriously endanger the crews. Additionally, the wear of the barrels further heightened the inaccuracy and risks of friendly fire. In World War I, artillery was the main cause of death on the battlefield, leading to massive destruction and countless lives lost. The relentless bombing forever changed the landscape, destroying everything in its path. This horror prompted significant changes in military strategy, driving the development of even more powerful artillery. Today, artillery is much more precise, capable of hitting targets with minimal collateral damage. The evolution from primitive catapults to today's advanced smart weapons is truly astonishing. It highlights our technological progress, but also serves as a sobering reminder of the immense destruction we are capable of inflicting on each other.